man. Glad to have you. Brian, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm so uh, glad to talk with you. You know, I have a lot of folks on this podcast over the, the years, you know, as I was telling you prior four and a half, gosh, almost five years doing this thing. Um, not many, I get the opportunity to read their books prior. And I actually picked, I don't know if you knew this or not. Um, uh, I can't remember if I, if I told you all before, but uh, I actually picked up your book. It was back in 20, God, it had to be 29, no, 2020, excuse me. In the summer during the pandemic, um, I had a friend that mentioned mm -hmm. uh, the book. So I went and bought it on Amazon, read it in like two weeks or something like that. And it's been huge, man. So one of the, to get the chance to talk with you is really cool because the basis of your book, and I'm talking about published, um, but the basis of that book was really helpful to be to think differently about, you know, because I write a lot, whether it's blogs, I have a couple of children's books now, I have some longer form ones I'm writing. Um, but it was just really helpful for me to kind of get an understanding of, wait, there's a different way to do it than what I thought was, I got to sit down, I got to have this massive, you know, story, I got to write chapter by chapter, like all these different things. So I thought yeah. your book, I wanted to first you know, say that I, I appreciate it. I'm grateful to come across your book and uh, thanks for putting that out there um, for, for everyone That's to read. Exciting, so. man. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for reading it. And it's gotten even better since then. I, I know, um, I think you know this, but I just released the second edition in December. So since you read that, which yeah. I think the, the second edition has got probably 60 to 80% new content. And oh, wow. I think even better. So yeah. You know, it's reading. hilarious, I actually. That. I didn't realize this, but so I'm, I don't know if you'd recommend this to people, but I'm writing two books simultaneously. Um, it's just because the way my mind works, I, when I have an idea, I'm like, all right, I got to put it down, but I actually have, I don't know if this will come up on thing, but you're the little yeah. word, word bubble and that's not going to show Mind up. map. Yeah. Mind yeah. map um, for this, this uh, newer book. Um, I just want to get the idea. I'm going to write the other one first, I think, but um, I wanted to mind map it. So I had this, all this stuff in, in my head. I wanted to get out. Uh, but again, that was a cool idea to think through. Uh, but anyways, we'll get into that because I, I want to, I think it'll be helpful for folks, um, especially to talk about writing or, or just, you know, as Seth Godin likes to say, shipping your work in general, just kind of get it out there, whatever it may be. But I want to start with your story because, you know, here's someone at least, again, reading the background with your book before and some research, right? You, you dropped out of college. What were you going to do? And here you go starting a massive business what was like 18 months later, uh, you were already like a, a multimillionaire so, um, or multimillion dollar business. So I'm really intrigued of two things to start. One is, how did you get to the point where you're a broke college student? Like where, what were the, the steps leading to that? And then how did you switch it? Because I think a lot of us, whether we're in college or it's even after the fact, we're in a, a job we don't like or whatever, how did you make the switch to actually change and go in a different direction? Mm. Nice. So um, I made the decision to drop out of school because I was tired of learning how to run a business from professors who have never ran businesses. That didn't make sense to me. Um, so I decided to drop out. And, 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 but I had ran businesses before, like in high school and college and that sort of thing. So that kind of gave me the confidence to drop mm -hmm. out. But then the big thing, uh, and I actually taught on this at a conference we were running over this past weekend. So it's kind of fresh on my mind, but um, Tim Ferriss has this, I think it's the fear-based decision-making or something mm -hmm. framework that he teaches where he says, anytime you're, you're facing a big decision, say, hey, what's the worst that could happen? And then what's the life impact of that thing, scale of one to 10, right? So worst case scenario is I drop out of school, I lose my scholarships, I come back in a year, I have to go finish my degree. Mm -hmm. Scale of one to 10, what's the life impact? Probably a temporary two. And then it would be not really that, that big of a life impact. Now flip it. What's the best case scenario? Best case scenario, I drop out of school. I start a company. I have a two-year head start. I spend those years growing my company, like all those things. Okay, mm -hmm. what's the, the life impact of that? Probably a seven, eight, nine and a permanent uh, life-altering trajectory. So his philosophy is, you know, a lot of people, that they give up on potential permanent seven, eight, nines for fear of the temporary two or mm -hmm. three. When you do that framework, it, it, get, it, it often gives you the courage to make the hard decision. And so that's what I did. And um, that led to me ultimately dropping out, publishing a book. The book, book did pretty well, published another book. That book did pretty well. And then people started asking, hey, how are you doing this? And that led to creating self-publishing school and really 
fast forward to today, we've published about 6,000 books wow. um, or not even about more than 6,000 books um, in the last seven years. And um, it's, it's just kind of been a, a wild ride since then. How did you, when, so let's, if we take that point of dropping out, if you can kind of go back and remember that, why was writing a book the step you wanted to take? Yeah, it's a great question, Brian. I, writing a book was the step I wanted to take because it was an accidental step, first and foremost. It wasn't like I had this master plan. Uh, I think in, whether it's dropping out, whether it's you know your day job that you maybe love, you maybe don't love so much to maybe you want to get out of it. Um, if you're trying to build towards something, I love having a long-term goals, but and sometimes that's helpful, but sometimes it's just, what's the very next thing that I can do, do that thing and then see what door that unlocks for you. Yeah. And so that really was it for me. It was, uh, it started as a passion project. I said, Hey, there are people in my life who I know want to start a business, but they need to go from entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Uh, and so I said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to put together this PDF that'll help them. And I keep, you know, his friends that were asking me questions like, Hey, how are you doing this? How are you doing this? And, and so I decided to put together this PDF. It ultimately evolved into a book. And then that, uh, uh, that book ultimately just started selling pretty well. And so I think that made sense as the logical next step, just as a passion project thing. And it evolved into a business. And then fast forward a few years after that, it was, then I was more strategic and I said, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to publish a book that will then launch self-publishing school. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a little bit more strategic. Did you like to write though? Like in terms of prior to the first book, like, did you like to write or was it just like, okay, this seems like an idea. Again, there's, I have some thoughts here. Let me just put something down on paper. Uh, yeah, I did not like to write. <laughs> um, I'm a C-level English student and a college dropout with ADHD. Uh, and so not, not exactly the, the most likely person to write a book, but I felt like the message was more important than the mechanism mm -hmm. and the mechanism of a book I felt could really help people. And it's, there's this concept I talk about it in my new book, it's called leveraged impact. When you do work to create this book, that book goes on to impact thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even millions of people, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think I just inherently knew that I'm gonna bring leverage to this conversation if I crystallize it into written word. And yeah. whether that's a PDF, whether that's a book, I can then send this or sell this to all these people who need help with this thing. And it just brings leverage versus getting on the phone and talking to people for a half hour and an hour um, and then just telling them everything I know for free and that sort of thing. So I'm always looking for ways that I can leverage and, and, mm -hmm. and crystallize something once and then bring leverage to that thing. Yeah. Well, you know, you make a great point too. And I think it's maybe something to noodle on for a minute is whether you're leveraging it or not is the fact that you actually put it out there. Because I think one of the things I struggled with for a lot of years was, and, and the, the, the perfect example I talk a lot of this podcast is, you know, I've published two uh, children's books. And, but the first one I wrote in 2012 to 2013, I wrote most of it. I never published it. it well, because of an illustrator snafu, I didn't publish it until 2021, uh, until May of 2021, because there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, doubt. I shelved it for many years. And I think a lot of us get to this, you know, challenge of like, well, I don't want to put it out there. It might look bad or stupid or what are people going to think? But the reality is, and, and maybe you can elaborate on this, is at least putting it out there, whether you sell a ton of stuff or do nothing, it could A, help people, but B, it also broadens your horizons. It opens those doors to things yes. you never even thought of, right? Yes. Um, I'm, I like to say a book's kind of like this key that opens the door to Narnia. <laughs> right. It's, it's it, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia, if you've seen the movies or read the books, you know, they discover this key that opens this door to this magical world that they didn't know existed. And that's what happened for me. And that's what's happened for so many of the people that we work with is a book opens this door um, to all of these opportunities that only exist um, for published authors. And, you know, uh, the root word of authority is author. Um, and for a lot of people that they become an authority by first becoming an author. Mm -hmm. And then, and then through that, they grow their impact, they grow their income and they grow their business if they have one. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and, and remind me, what's the, the year? When was that first book? And when did you put that out? Yeah. First book went out, came out in, I want to say 2013 okay. and then self-publishing school launched, I want to say in 2015, February okay. 2015. Okay. So back in 2013, those days, again, you dropped out of college, you, you wrote this book, you put this out, a lot of your thoughts into it. What was the mindset back then? Like, did you, you seem like you have a lot of confidence now you've, you've built the business, you got a lot, you know, a lot of obviously 
um, good reviews of it, a lot of folks you're helping, but were you confident back then? Did you struggle with the writing process of like actually getting it out or were there some things that you had to overcome in that process? Oh, I, I, I struggle a lot in the writing process. It, it, it doesn't necessarily come naturally to me. Um, and that's why I love your, your podcast, your shirt, the message behind all of it is just get started. I mean, that really was my philosophy. It was just get started. And I'm going to try to write one chapter today, and then I'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And so um, I struggled and struggle uh, with a lot of the same things that ever, everyone else listening to this does, which is, okay, who am I to say this? The first book, I wrote it at 19 years old. It's like, okay, it, you know, you naturally think, okay, who's going to want to listen to me, a 19 year old writing this book? And so I definitely struggled with all those things and it didn't come naturally, but it's, I mean, I think the theme of this podcast um, that really was my mantra of, uh, okay, I've, I've got to get started and I've got to keep moving. I've got to keep moving. And then eventually I'll figure it out and I, I might publish it and it might bomb. Um, and, and that is just getting started, right? Because your pub date is the starting point for selling books. It's not, a lot of people look at the launch week as the finish line. It's like, oh, I launched the book. Now it's out there. That's the finish line, right? That's the starting point. And so there's so many elements of just getting started throughout leading up to publishing after publishing. And that was kind of my mantra is, you know, start, what is it? The, the, is it Roosevelt or somebody else is start with the tools in your hand and, 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 and the skills that you have at your command and, and, but, but whatever you do, just, just get started. I'm paraphrasing, um, but just get started. And so that was kind of the, um, the, I think the mantra behind it. Did you, with the stuff that, and, and maybe you could share some of it, like in published, you know, like I was showing the, the mind map here and, and, you know, the way you did your outline, what, did you have those ideas as you went into the first book or were those discovered when you're like, why am I writing it like this? Like, did you figure out a way mm. differently? How did those ideas come that helped you obviously on those future books and what self-publishing school is all about and everything like that? Yeah, I'm a big fan of this concept. It's called who, not how. Um, so when, whenever I run into a problem in my life or in my business, I ask the question, who has solved this before, not how do I solve it? Um, because if I can figure out the who, well, then they probably know the how, and they've probably, they're probably going to save me time, money, and energy in the process. So I got some of the kernels of the first book, like the process on how to do it. I went to a mentor who had written a book, and I said, hey, what do I need to do? Um, and he, he taught me some of the basics, used that to write the first one, and there's kind of been an iterative process on the six books since then that I've personally written. And then obviously an iterative process on the six, 7,000 books that we've helped publish since then. It just, the process keeps getting better. Um, but the kernels came from first saying, hey, who's done this? And then learning from that person. What, so if we're kind of connecting the dots here, you mentioned obviously the first book came out, then you wrote the second and, you know, kind of the self-publishing school was maybe two, two and a half years or so after the, the first book. In that time, like when did you decide to say, all right, I'm going to take this from just writing books to actually make this a business that could continue to scale, can help people, but also can obviously be my livelihood. Like how did, can you share that ideation process? Because we always see the before and after, and it's, you know, not a lot of times the middle part never gets talked about of all the, the hurdles that you had to jump through. I agree. I think it's easy to, it's, it's easy to look at someone's finish line and compare it to your starting point mm -hmm. <laughs> or yeah. the whole iceberg, iceberg theory. You see the, uh, the 10% that's above the water and you don't see the 90% below the surface. And so I love that you asked that question because I think it's an important part to focus on and it's not linear. I, I think it, people will see, oh, you know, we've done 35 million in the last uh, seven years. We've been on the Inc. 5000 list a bunch of times in a row. We've, I have been, done Forbes 30 under 30. Like it's easy to see that. <laughs> Right. and not see the journey to get there. And so there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of really, really, really tough moments. Um, but the ideation phase specifically, what you're asking about is, it, it, you know, I dropped out of school. I was starting a business that was totally failing at the time. Like I'd done successful businesses before then, but this one was just failing. And I just remember um, people kept asking me about the book stuff. They kept saying, hey, how are you doing this? How are you doing this? How are you doing this, right? Uh, and it's like somebody can only smack you in the face so many times before you turn around and look. And you turn around and look, and there's this whole group of people that won't help with this thing. And so it started, uh, I would just pick up the phone and for an hour for free, just teach people everything I knew on that, on how to launch books, or how to write books. Mm -hmm. And then finally, that happened so many times. I said, you know what? I should try to charge for this. 
Hmm. And so we did a, a beta program. So anyone listening to this, if you're trying to grow your business or if you're trying to start a business, the first question I would ask is, what are people already asking you about and asking for your help on? That's probably a good sign that, that's, that there's a need there. And so focus on that thing. And then, and then there's a mantra that I have, which is sell then build. So until you have sales, you don't have a business, you have a business idea, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of people, they, they go, oh, what's my LLC? What's my logo? What's all these things? And I, uh, I, I defaulted to selling first. And this wasn't well, my first business. I didn't do this, which was actually when I was failing. I spent all this time building this stuff that no one wanted. Yeah. Uh, and so instead with self-publishing school, I said, hey, let's sell our first cohort of students. Let's get feedback on exactly what they need once they purchase and then let's build exactly that for them, which means that I validated the idea before I built it out. It was a much better product. We had raving fans. There were testimonials, like all, that, all these things, and that just kick-started the success of the business. So that would be my advice for anyone listening here is, is, is whether, that's with, whether it's your book idea or whether it's your business idea, go to the questions that people are already asking you mm. um, or maybe the broken record conversations that you're already having and start there. How did you know what, so when you put that first cohort together, did you just pull a, like a, a price out of thin air or did you have some idea of like, now hey, let me try this or that? How, how did you come to it? That, this actually question comes up a lot with people I talk with is like, what do I charge for something? Mm, yeah, I, I feel like I talk about this in, in, the, uh, in my new book on the part about um, using the books to grow your business. But basically I look at how do you, um, how do you price based on value received, not time spent? And so that's the starting point. And I, I talk about the four Ps of a high converting offer. So person, pain, promise, price. All right. This also applies to the four Ps of a best-selling book. They're the same thing, right? So you can start and crystallize this with your book and then use the book to grow your business. But either way, it's the same four tenets. So who's the person that you're helping with this thing? And this is the person that you can best help. Mm -hmm. What's the pain that they have that they know that they have? And then what's the promise that you can make with this book or with this thing that you're selling in the business? And so for me, I didn't, I didn't know to crystallize it like that back then, <laughs> um, but I kind, I kind of generally focused on those things. And then I said, what are, what's the value uh, that these folks are receiving? And that was something I learned from my dad. He said, never sell by the hour. Um, like when I had a pressure, I'll just use this as a very tangible example. I think will help people. So I had a pressure washing business in high school. First person asked me, what will you charge to pressure wash my house? Right. Exactly this question. I'm like, yeah. I have no idea. I'll get back to you. <laughs> and, uh, and my first thought was, okay, how much time, what's my time per hour worth? Well, at the time it was $7.25 <laughs> minimum wage. And so I said, all right, this will probably take 10 hours. Uh, maybe I charge him 75 bucks. Right. And so that was my initial thought. But then uh, my dad and I forget who else challenged me to price based on value received. And so then I said, okay, well, how much, what, what is the value you receive? Well, how much would this person have to char have to spend to rent a pressure washer? Let's call it 50 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Ladders and stuff, 50 bucks. Okay. It's going to take them two days because they don't do this frequently. Let's say they charge 20 bucks an hour. Or that's what their time's worth. Two 10 hour days is uh, 400 bucks. Okay. What would they pay to get their weekend back? maybe a hundred bucks. Okay. I'm up to $500 in value and I'm sure I can list out other things. Right? So now when I say, okay, this is worth $500 in value to them, I'll charge them 300 bucks. I am delivering far more in value than what I'm charging, which means it's a no brainer for the right person. Right. And so, but because I shifted to price based on value received, I, I, I'm, it's, it's more of a fair price and it's more profitable for me. And it's still a big win for them. And so I use that example with pricing. I said, okay, what is it worth for someone to get their book done, right? How many hours can I save them? How much money can I save them in the process on yeah. book cover design, formatting, editing, all those things that kind of looked at that and said, all right, I feel like this is a fair price. And then at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I think, um, the market decides. <laughs> yeah. um, and so we, we put it out there and then we got feedback on the price and we got feedback on the offer and how we structured things and all that. And we've just kind of kept making it better since then. Well, and I think, you know, this is actually something I do, you know, sales coaching with a lot of folks and similar in the fact of, you know, you have to charge what is going to get to the market where you want to go toward. I think some folks want to get everyone and they'll undercut themselves just so they can get more people. But the real, to your point, 
all of a sudden now you're spending way more time and energy. And generally what I've found, and I'm not saying this is a hundred percent of the time, but generally the cheaper something is the, the people that are going to pay the cheapest, they spend the most time. They want the most time. They kind of want to wring the towel dry to get that out versus most people that see the value, they're willing to pay that because you're going to do a lot of the work and they're going to kind of not step aside, but they're going to be better clients, if you will. Um, so at least I've, yes. I've seen that in, in a lot of different avenues, you know? Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, right? Because their time is worth so much, mm -hmm. um, the people who can afford higher prices. So it is not worth it to them to spend more time directly with you because that would bring down their, their per hour of what their time's worth. Right. Yeah. And I've, I've found the same as well. Yeah. Well, so one of the things too, I, I guess maybe why, why we're on this and we're talking about kind of writing and publishing, because th this question comes up a lot because I talk with folks and I, and I reference your, your book a lot over the last few years. Um, but they're like, I can't write a book, Brian. Like I'm not an author. I'm not, I don't have the time. You know, these are the, You've probably heard every every excuse under the book. Um, what under the book under the sun? I meant for for writing a book. Um, what would be your encouragement to folks that give you that response? They see out in the street there. They're channel. I can't write a book. How do you respond? Yeah, my my encouragement to them would be um, yes, you can and you need to, and it's actually one of the best things that you can do for your business if you have one, or for your income or your impact. Um, is taking the time. Now, it's a short-term sacrifice um, and you don't have to know everything. You just have to know a little bit more than the person that you're teaching. But it's, I believe it's just so important to take the things that we know and crystallize them into the written word through a book. Um, and it's not easy. Uh, it's going to require some short-term sacrifice, but in doing so, um, it, you're going to create a long-term asset that for years and years and years, will continue to bring back royalties or customers or just impact people right and and long after you're off this earth this book's still going to be here um so i think my challenge to those folks would be um read my new book i talk about a bunch of in chapter one i think chapter two as well i talk about all these things that we tell ourselves which is i don't have time i'm too busy i'm not ready yet like all these things and uh and 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 take the challenge and and see if you don't make progress well, and I think the, and again, I had to overcome this. So I know going through the, the, the fire here is not writing a book is the same as anything else. It's not going to the gym or it's not eating healthy or it's not, I mean, these are all habits that we create or stories we put in our head. Right. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of the fear inside us is telling us we can't do something, but the reality is we can, you proved it. Right. I mean, you know, I, I, again, the fact that I, I was the same way, I barely passed English. Like the fact that I wrote a couple of children's books already, like no one would ever think that, but you have to get over that fear and uncertainty and doubt and ultimately believe in yourself that, Hey, I have something that I could share with people um, that could help the world, you know, whether it's one yeah. person or a million, you know, I agree. Um, so someone's, well, by the way, let's, let's, why don't we put this in here? Can you share, I know you'd put out for the audience and we appreciate this. So publishbook.com slash Brian, and they can actually go get a free copy of publish. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, if, if you're interested in my new book, it's called Published, The Proven Path from Blank Page to 10,000 Copies Sold. Um, you can get it on Amazon. If you're an Audible listener or audiobook listener, you can get it on Audible. I narrate it. Um, and, and I think you might like that. Obviously, if you're listening to a podcast, um, audio might be your preferred, um, preferred medium. So check it out on Audible. But if you want a physical copy and a free physical copy for the first 50 people, um, from this podcast, go to that link. It's, it's published book. So like I published a book. So published book.com forward slash Brian. That's B R I A N. Um, and first 50 people go to that link. Um, just tell us where to ship it. This is not, there's no strings attached. <laughs> this is not a free plus shipping or anything like that. It's literally, I will print it, pack it, ship it. Um, you just tell me where to send it. Perfect. I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, I just wanted to layer that in there before I forgot maybe later on. Um, yeah. Okay. So just a couple more questions. Um, and I appreciate the time on this because I think this is really helpful. Do you look back at all, you know, going back eight, nine years now, maybe even a, a few further, uh, but do you look back and kind of on your journey and reminisce at all, whether it's good positive moments, like, wow, I can't believe I did that or the opposite. Ah, I wish I did something different. Like, are there, is there anything you kind of look at and 
I don't know whether it's, I don't want to say regret or something that you're proud of yourself, anything you'd share on either the positive or negative, I guess, um, just from your journey yeah. that, that you've learned. Yeah, I, I don't do regrets. Um, I, 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 instead, I would do do differently. Um, and there's tons of things I would do differently. And there's tons of things that, I would, uh, you know, lessons that I've learned. But I think I'm trying to do a better job of reflecting back and in, in, uh, on a lot of the wins. Um, because a lot of the a lot of the things that we've done and in, in, in places that we've grown as a company and then myself personally, it's it, I dreamed it and I and I set a clear vision and I set clear goals and so I'm not surprised that a lot of it happened, which sounds really arrogant, but I, I don't mean it that way. It's just I I, I was I was clear about where I want to go and, and goals that I have and things like that and and. I'm not even close to where those are. <laughs> um, so there's, you know, there's a long way to go, but I think uh, trying to look back and, and, and uh, be more reflective. And I've got a sign that's, that's right over there in front of me. And it says until further notice, celebrate everything. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. I need to do a better job. And, and uh, us just as humans need to do a better job of celebrating wins along the journey, especially us as entrepreneurs. We're just high achievers in general. Yeah. Need to do a better job of celebrating wins. Uh, along the journey. So I've been trying to do a little bit more of that. That's awesome. Yeah, that reminds me, I actually got a tattoo recently. I don't know if you do stoic philosophy, but memento mori, you know, remember, we must die. Like, it's kind of helped me kind of keep present mind. And like, mm -hmm. you know, like, listen, we, we can have lofty goals, we can do things we want, but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow enjoy today, enjoy the present moment where we've gotten ourselves. Cause I think that is, yeah, we're always kind of like, what's next? What's more? I have to win this. I got to win that. And it's rarely do we look down the mountain and realize, holy crap, I can't believe I climbed up this far, you know? Yes. Yes. And I think that's a, that's a great, I love that. So until further notice, is it celebrate the wins or just celebrate, celebrate everything? Celebrate everything. Okay. <laughs> until further notice, celebrate everything. I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> so on that note, then someone's getting started, right? They could be writing a book, could be anything though, and take this from, from your journey. And it may be this actually, but maybe something else. Is there a piece of encouragement advice? Maybe it is a quote, anything that you would share with them, any additional um, kind of thoughts that get them out the door going today um, versus mm. waiting? Yeah, I'll, I'll share one uh, very practical tip and, and then one just more, more big picture um, philosophy. Uh, practical tip would be if you're thinking about writing a book, um, come up with your book idea. I talk about this in the beginning of my book. Um, and as soon as you're done listening to this podcast, um, grab a blank sheet of paper, put a circle in the middle, write out your book idea, set a timer for 15 minutes, and I want you to mind map or brainstorm everything that you can think of on that topic. So the stories that you have, lessons that you've learned, uh, uh, you know, books that you've read, broken record conversations, all those things, 15 minutes brainstorm. I promise if you do that, you're going to see that there's a book that you can write. You know a lot more th about that subject than you think, and you're going to have gotten started on your book. Uh, the whole rest of the writing process is going to be easier. And then to kind of more the big picture uh, you know, suggestion or, or, or encouragement that I would give people, it, it is to just get started. <laughs> it's so funny, Brian, I always talk about it's not just saying this because this is your podcast, but I all this, this is my recommendation when it comes to writing a book, when it comes to starting a business or what you, you've got to take the first step. Yeah. And that this is the first step, the mind map thing that I, that I just recommended, but no matter what it is, take the first step today and then take another step tomorrow and then take another step the next day. And just it, it life is short, <laughs> right? Like the tattoo that you got, we're all going to die. And it's, it's, it's probably going to happen sooner than you think. Yeah. And, and so there's, we got to live life with this sense of urgency. And if you want to do something, stop thinking about it, stop analyzing it, all the things that could go wrong, just start. Uh, and when you start, you get a feedback loop and maybe it totally fails. Awesome. You just learned something. And so you can celebrate that you just learned a lot and you got new information and then you can try again and you can start the next thing. And so I think that's really important. Mm, that's a great point. One of the things too, I'll just, just to layer on here to end. And have you, have you read uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear? I haven't. I've had him on my podcast and people keep recommending that book. I just, well, I, the thought that when you mentioned that, it kind of reiterated this whole thing of like, cause sometimes we sat like, 
As an example, I want to write a book. Well, that's a really lofty goal when people hear that, because we think like, you know, John Grisham, we're writing this massive novel, you know, and it's all these detailed or whatever. But the reality is, if we think of, I want to act like someone that writes mm. books, and that's one of his big keys in there is change the thinking. Like, I, not my goal is to lose 50 pounds is I want to, I want to act like someone that lives a healthy lifestyle. Now all your choices become leading in that direction, right? You see, oh, you know, I'm going to pass up the burger to go with the, the salad. I'm making that up. But hey, I'm, I'm not going to skip yeah. the workout today. I'm going to do something because you're acting like someone. So it's the same thing of showing up every day. You kind of mentioned it. Just doing something, even if it's little today, it moves you to tomorrow and the next day. And that action creates a lot of opportunity, you know? I agree. I agree. Oh man, this is a lot of fun, dude. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, share your details. Where can people come find you? Say hello. What's what's the best spot? Yeah, um, thank you for having me, Brian. So um, best place um, to find me on social is I only have Facebook, so you can find me there. Um, if you're interested in grabbing a copy of my new book, again, the link is publishedbook.com forward slash Brian. If you're one of the first 50 people there, grab a copy for free um, or just grab a copy on Amazon and Again, the Audible version is, is pretty solid narrated by me. Uh, and then if you're interested in, in learning more about what we do at Self-Publishing School, um, you can go to our website and book a call with the team. It's at self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. We'd be happy to talk about your book, your goals, uh, and how we can help. Chandler, thank you so much, man. This was a ton of fun. I appreciate it. Brian, thanks for having me.